aren't we living in some interesting times? As I was making this wonderful mashed potato and cabbage video, I was thinking to myself that this would be a perfect, perfect dish for a young person to learn how to cook with. As the kids are now out of school for some time, and a lot are going to be home looking for stuff to do, this would be a really wonderful way to get in the kitchen and do some bonding. Be able to help with lunch or dinner or breakfast and also learn some very valuable life skills. This is Diane and I hope you bring your kids to the kitchen. Look for more recipes to come under the category of cooking with kids and we'll get started and I'll show you how to do this. Calcannon potatoes. So, so good and really pretty easy and very inexpensive to make. Let me show you how to do it. We're going to start with some butter in the bottom of a pan. And then we're going to put in some sliced cabbage. No special knife skills. Just slice it oh, about a quarter inch thick. Into the pot it goes. And we're going to cook this down until it's nice and soft. I'm going to make this a one pot wonder to save a mess. So we'll put a lid on that and we're going to cook it for about 15 minutes. While the cabbage is cooking, we're going to slice up some green onions or scallions, however we want to call that, because some are going to get stirred into the potatoes and cabbage when it's done, and some are going to make a beautiful little garnish on top. The cabbage has cooked for about 20-25 minutes. I kept it on relatively low heat, put some water in a couple of times, and now it's nice and soft. So what we're going to do is take this out of the pot and into the same pot I'm going to put the potatoes in and cook them. If you can get your hands on a cabbage that was grown local, that's the way to go because chances are they could have been picked in the fall and stored and if they're picked in the fall after the first frost they're quite a bit sweeter. Anyway, so the cabbage is out. We'll put that aside. It'll still be hot after the potatoes. Now there's been some conversation about whether to cut potatoes very small or not. Personally, I don't mind cutting them small at all because when you go to mash them, I don't mind having the extra liquid that the potato might absorb. And then cover them by about an inch with water. I want that starch, so I'm using the liquid that I kept them in. We're going to put the lid on these. And those are going to cook until I can stick a knife in and they're nice and tender. Probably about 20 minutes. Let's look at our potatoes. They've been simmering about a 25 minutes or so and they're perfectly knife tender. Absolutely perfect. So, what I'm going to do is drain most of this liquid out. Alright, now that the liquid is drained out, what we're doing is mashing these up a little bit. And the secret to a good mashed potato is definitely do it by hand. I've had this potato masher 
for a long time. I think it's great. I love it. I have never, even in all my years of restaurant and catering, I have never put them in a mixer. I've always done them by hand. Now, after they get a little bit of a mash on them, now don't skimp out on the butter. We want to throw a nice, decent sized chunk of butter. And I like to start to season these in the beginning. Make sure that the, by putting, I use sea salt or kosher salt, and by putting it in in the beginning, it will have a chance to melt so that when you taste it, you'll get the full effect of the salt. If it doesn't melt all the way, when it does melt, you could say, oh my God, how much salt did I actually add to that? So you mix it around. Now what you want to do, because this is a straight-sided pot, is take a rubber spatula, go around the edges, and then go into the middle so that you can give it another mash. And then you can tell by looking at this whether it's mashed all the way because if it's not, you will see tiny little lumps in it. And it's very easy to do. Now we want to gild the lily with a bit of heavy cream. Just gotta have it. Can't do without the heavy cream and mashed potatoes. Or the other thing you can use too is milk, but you want to get it from a small dairy, the kind that comes in glass milk jugs that actually has the cream on top of it. That is absolutely the best. And look at this. Doesn't this look wonderful? Oh my God. These are going to be some really good potatoes. Now, what I also want to do is taste the potatoes to see if they're seasoned up close to correct. And push those into the middle again. And just give them one more mash. They look absolutely perfect. We'll taste it. A little more salt. I also want to compensate for the cabbage that's going in. So now, after these are mashed, then what we're going to do is stir the cabbage in. How simple is this? And you know what? They are unbelievably good. All the years, my father's Irish, my mom's Italian, English Irish, but whatever. I don't think that I ever had calcan and potatoes. We ate mostly Italian because my father was a wannabe Italian. Having said that, when I finally did make calcan and potatoes, oh my God, I was, I was just shocked at how good they really were. So I've been making them ever since. Now I do like to brown my cabbage a little bit more. You know, you could steam it and not have it with this brownish color in it. But I like the um, I like the way that it's a little bit brown because cooking it down like that also adds a little more sweetness to the cabbage. And the cabbage is full of all sorts of vitamins and minerals and it's just this is just a really good dish trying to keep us all healthy which is now a really good time to attempt that and how much cabbage depends on your personal preference I like a lot of cabbage in it and so I cooked a little bit extra that we can have on the side I'm gonna put just a little bit more I'm not gonna use all of that because this has actually quite a bit in it. Calcan and potatoes. Then we're going to garnish it up with some chopped onion. You can also do these potatoes with cooked kale. I'm a cabbage lover more so than kale, but kale crushed and chopped up is good too. And chives are just starting to come up in the garden so you can stir a few chives into this and that'll give it a little bit more of an onion flavor. And that's how easy 
cow can and potatoes are. How simple does it get? But you can't cheat on cream and you can't cheat on the butter. You have to use actually a lot of both. But you're not going to eat a boatload of them. And so, go with a Jigs dinner. Oh, yum. Actually, as far as I'm concerned, these are good any time of the year. So there you have Calcan and potatoes. And they can be done in advance. They rewarm beautifully. Making sure that you put enough cream and butter into them. They will rewarm without a problem whatsoever. I've done it for a lot of years, so that is a for sure thing. And then I found just enough chives in my garden to garnish those with. Isn't that pretty? And we're going to add a couple of green onions. And there you have it, Calcan and potatoes. My one pot wonder, heat and serve. Give it a try, you won't regret it. I hope you like this video. And do share with others, share with your friends. I do get paid a small amount from the advertisements that are on the video that help pay for the next video. If you subscribe to my channel, then you'll get updates on new videos which will come out quite frequently. And take a look around my channel. You'll probably find others you might like. And thanks for joining me.